up guys welcome back to another episode of dj's garage um i know it's been a while and i apologize for that um on today's episode we're going to be replacing a clock spring in 2006 dodge ram 2500 uh it is a cummins um there, i just i just recently bought this truck uh the airbag lights on it won't pass west virginia state inspection with an airbag light on so I've got to replace it and uh, a few other little miscellaneous things here and there. Um, nothing, nothing major. I mean, uh, in the future we will go through an overview of this truck, uh, show you everything that's been done to it by the previous owner. Um, it's it's a pretty bad dad. Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's jump straight into it. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is start your truck turn your wheel so that it's straight up and down turn your wheel so that it looks like this because you've got two bolts back here um, you've got one here and also one at the bottom if the wheel is straight you can't get to those you need it you need it to be up and down like this all right so all right so I'm going to go ahead and take these bolts out. Um, now be mindful that uh, these bolts hold your airbag in. Once you get them, you're going to want to take these loose and then be very gentle after that because you take a chance in your airbag blowing up while you've got the batteries hooked up. So there's one. Yeah. There's the other one. All right, so now this airbag will just lift right out of there. Start it up and straighten your wheel back up because you'll have to take the steering wheel off. And if it's lined up straight, it'll be a lot easier to remember how it goes back on there. Now we'll go outside and we'll unhook the batteries. We've got a battery on this side and a battery on this side. We'll unhook both of those batteries. All right, so we've got those loosened up and off of there. We've got that battery off of there. Um, we'll wait just a few minutes so any residual power, if there is any, uh, is released. Because I really don't want this airbag to blow up in my face. That does not sound fun. Alright, let's see what happens. So you've taken those two bolts out. Turned your steering wheel straight. And then you've got these two little clips right here. Those are what actually control your airbag. So we are going to remove those now. I really don't want this thing pointing in my face while I'm trying to do this. There we go. Phew. Now this one here, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is for the horn, I think. 
So now whenever you get this out, do not lay it on its face because then you have the potential of these two connections making a contact with something or heck even static electricity arcing across and your airbag explodes. So make sure you always lay it down like this. Do not lay it down on the face. And then you're gonna wanna set it out of the way so you're not bumping into it, not tearing tearing it up, anything like that. Okay, we just got this one center bolt and uh, this little rubber grommet. It sits right there like that. It's just got these little, I don't know, rubber clips that clip into here. Um, take that out of the way, then we're gonna take this off. All right. So, break this bolt loose. I should have showed you guys. Um, the horn doesn't work. The uh, airbag lights on. None of the buttons on the steering wheel work. Um, pretty much all the the signs of a bad clock spring. So that's why I am replacing it. So you take that bolt out, put it in a safe place. Definitely don't want to lose that one. Take this cover off. Now you'll put your your center piece of your steering wheel puller here and your two studs here. So that way when you apply pressure here, it pushes the steering wheel. So your steering wheel puller comes with a series of bolts, different sizes. This little guy right here, some washers, and a little plug for the back. Um, this way you're not pushing on the threads. If this is uh, too big or too small or whatever the case is. But in my particular case, that little guy right there is bigger than the hole for my splines. So we won't use that. I checked this, uh, this stud right here. Stud doesn't interfere with the threads, so we're good. Now what we need to do is uh, decide on, on what bolt set we need. Um, from the looks of it, the size of this. Um, these bolts don't have a size, so I can't really give you a size. Um, if you buy the same kit, it's just the uh, just your standard steering wheel puller. It's going to be the uh, biggest size bolt, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be your your biggest bolt. So we'll go ahead and get all this stuff set up. All right. That's all there is to it right there. And that's your steering wheel. All right, now, I want you guys to see something here. The, uh, little locating pin this guy is broken on this one so yeah all right now with that out of the way we can go ahead and start taking this cover off so that we can get to the bolts for the clock spring all right, so you've got three of these T20 Torx bits, or Torx head screws, that you've got to take out. Once you have those out, 
these covers will pop off. Really, really want that screw to come out of there because don't want to lose it. So, I'll go ahead and take these out of the way. So you'll have one here, one here, and one here. Take those off, it'll give you access to your bolts. All right. So now your, uh, your clock spring has an indicator pin right here for this, which sets your, your axis for the base because this turns as you can see that's that's broken that should not just move it's well i mean it should but it's it's gritty almost if that makes sense so we'll go ahead and uh remove these phillips head screws so we'll take these screws out And then pull this clock spring out and down. Um, this one right here, it's ABS. So um, the ABS light the brake light, airbag light, are on in the dash. The three of those will not allow this truck to get a West Virginia State inspection, unfortunately. Um, so I have to fix all of those in order for this truck to pass West Virginia State Inspection to get a sticker so that I can start driving it. Uh, the truck runs great, drives great. So, we've got the new clock spring replaced. Um, the locating dowel. Since that one was broken, I want to see how this is supposed to connect so I don't break it again or well I can't I can't say again I didn't break the first one but it was broken so it doesn't get broken again alright so <clears throat> that little locating dowel sits inside this slot of your steering wheel so we need to make sure that we keep it like that. So we will go ahead and remove that. Fish this up through, fish this up through. Plug this in. Locating dowels in a good spot. 
Okay, so now that we've got the new clock spring in, got the steering wheel on, let's go ahead and we'll start putting all this stuff back on. So. Now the orientation in which you take this stuff off really isn't that important. Um, as far as these covers, should I say, uh, everything else is imperative that it goes on the way it came off and in the order in which it came off. Just going to start that bolt just so the steering wheel does not fall off while I'm trying to get these covers back on. So replacing a clock spring really isn't too bad in in this particular vehicle. Now I have replaced clock springs that were an absolute nightmare, um, mostly because they were either behind or attached to all of your your levers, like your your shifter, your blinkers, uh, headlights, everything tied into that clock spring. And there were a lot of pins and springs and it was sometimes it can be an absolute nightmare so we're just going to snug this up for now we're not going to leave it on there um basically we're just putting that on there so we can get this stuff on and not have to worry about the steering wheel falling off and losing our axis on our clock spring All right, so this is your lever for your tilt steering. You've got these two little locating dowels and a T20. You just line the locating dowels up, clip it in, and tighten up that T20, and you're golden. All right, so let's tilt that down to give ourselves a little bit of room. Now, we can go ahead and start replacing all those T20s. Never took this one out, so we'll just tighten it back up. All right. And then the two on the front, you had a silver one and a black one. The black one goes on this upper hole right here. The silver one goes on this lower hole here. So you've got one here and one back here. The black one went up front. One's got like a, uh, a thread pattern to thread into plastic. And the other one's like a... Uh, a machine screw that will I would assume run up into one of these metal plates all right so now that's tight all right, I'm going to get this back on here. Uh, if you're going to do this yourself, do not take that off of here. You don't need to. It's unnecessary. I just haven't done a clock spring on this particular year model truck, so I didn't know if there was going to be like a, a screw here that keeps this bolt from coming out or keeps the steering wheel from coming off. Um, so I removed it, but it's unnecessary. You don't have to. It's just a headache that you guys can avoid. All right. All right. So I got those little pins back in there. 
just make sure there's a car going by just make sure that you don't take this off it's it's unnecessary you don't have to take that off all right so now what we're going to do is take this bolt back out put this plate in here where it belongs and then tighten her all the way back up we'll put the airbag back in and this job is done it's pretty quick and painless job you just got to make sure that you're paying attention and don't unhook or mess with your airbag until you've unhooked the batteries because that's how bad things happen now you want to keep pressure on the steering wheel you don't want it to come loose because your clock spring could potentially just unwind itself um, I don't know about this particular year model but I do know that the older Chevrolet trucks the clock springs are indeed spring loaded and they'll just unwind themselves all the way and pretty much just ruin the clock spring so you need to be mindful of that at all times don't let it get away from you if it does move make sure it only moves a little bit at a time and if it ends up moving a full rotation try to track how many rotations it moved because it's it's set for so many rotations this way and so many rotations this way if you get that rotation off you take a chance in breaking it or things just not working correctly so definitely want to be mindful of everything that you're doing while you're doing it so that you don't ruin it um, these clock springs aren't super expensive for this particular truck but they're not cheap either um, I got the, uh, the part number is 06155, um, on the barcode itself, but on the box, it's, uh, P2009CLS227. Um, there's the, uh, barcode, um, this one is a BWD. I paid, I think it was like 150 bucks, roughly, for this clock spring, um, give or take a couple dollars. So they're not super expensive, but they're not cheap enough that you want to make mistakes. So, that's all set. It's done. Um, we're ready for the... We're ready for the airbag. So, now, the back of your airbag is color-coded. This one's tan, this one's black. These clips, this one's tan, this one's black. So you know which one goes where. We'll go ahead and plug in the horn first, I think. All right. And then tan to tan. black to black and we'll slide this guy back in and remember you cannot get to your two 10 millimeter bolts for now you've got to hook the batteries back up and turn the steering wheel in order for these 10 millimeter bolts to go back in so 
that's what I'm going to do now. So all the batteries are hooked up. No explosions. Airbag light went out. That's a good thing. So that's good. The airbag light went out. Still got the brake light and the ABS light. But. Those are all different problems. Extension. And that's how you replace a clock spring. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> so now the only lights on in the dash. So the only lights that are on in the dash are the ABS and the brake light. Um, let's check the horn because it didn't work before. Horn works. Um, let's see if the cruise, yep, cruise works now. Uh, off. All right, so replacing the clock spring, fixed everything here. Now, as far as the brake light is concerned, they think think i see I, I put it in the shop um i put new tires on it because it needed tires uh needed tires uh needs a front end alignment <clears throat> but uh the track bar that's that's what it is uh the track bar is bad up front so they can't do a front end alignment on it uh, i've already got it ordered i'm gonna put it on thursday or friday i haven't haven't decided which day. I think it's supposed to be here Thursdays, so if I've got time when it gets here before work, I'll uh, I'll put the uh, track bar on it, and then Friday morning take it down. Excuse me, take it down to get a front end alignment. And uh, the previous owner put new two two new front calipers on it, and uh, something something's not right because the brake pedal is as hard as a rock so i'm gonna get that figured out and uh get that taken care of that'll get rid of the uh brake light now the abs light is uh probably gonna be a wheel bearing i ordered a uh, let, me, let me find that oh wait i think it's in the uh the center console give me one second Um, I ordered a wheel speed sensor. It is right here. Um, but it's got aftermarket wheel bearings in it, and the wheel speed sensors are built into the bearings. So, that's not going to work. I'm going to return that and uh, try to track down some sort of, hopefully, potential wiring problem where they 
they plugged it in maybe it's just got some corrosion on the points and that'll get rid of the ABS light because that would be fantastic because the wheel bearing for this thing's over two hundred dollars and uh, I'm I'm not gonna like skimp out because I've I've wanted one of these trucks for years and I finally came across almost everything that I was looking for this truck pretty much checked off everything on my wish list except for a manual transmission it is an automatic truck I wasn't I wasn't interested in an automatic but it is so hard to find a third gen Cummins that's not rusted out in this state or any states locally because we're in a quote-unquote rust belt uh we get decent winters here uh they do a lot of salting on the roads um so a lot of vehicles around here get pretty rusty pretty fast um so with that being said uh this is the first one that i've found that was a long bed uh i wanted an eight foot bed um it's not rusted out um it's the third gen 5.9 cummins it's actually the the last full year of the 5.9 cummins they made the 5.9s in 2007 as well but it was only like half a year and then they converted over to the 6.7s um it's not that big a deal uh as far as the the 5.9 to the 6.7 the only thing that i didn't want to have to fool with with a 6.7 is uh all the extra crap that they put on it and yeah it's just a bunch of bunch of crap i didn't want to want to deal with um we could get into detail on it way more later on uh this video is actually drug on pretty long but i want to show you guys the truck um before we before we get so uh, let me get all this crap out of the way um that's a that's another pretty amazing thing about this truck is that uh the dash isn't cracked i haven't seen very many dodges at all that don't have a cracked dash um got some glow shift gauges uh you've got your fuel pressure it's got an air dog fuel system on it um your exhaust temp trans temp and boost um I'm not a I'm not a very big fan of this tent. It goes like halfway down the windshield, and my line of sight is right at the transition. So, well, actually, the the phone is my line of sight when I'm driving. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna lie. I'd like to cut it up flush with the top right here. I don't want to remove it all together, but I do want it to be higher. It makes it very difficult to see. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty good looking truck overall. I uh, got some new parts in the back seat. I need to clean up my mess from changing out that clock spring just now. Uh, there's my little tripod that I had you guys on. Just had it clipped on the center console. Um, this truck is a six seater. The uh, center console folds up. And there is a seat there. Um, let me get out and show you guys. Dang it. Uh, it's got LEDs. Um, there's the, uh, the back seat. I put brake fluid in it because I hooked my OBD reader up and, uh, the code that it was reading for the brakes is low brake fluid. Um, I topped it off. It's not low. So I'm hoping that they just need bled. Maybe there's some air in the lines causing it to throw a code. Um, there's a very massive amount of new parts that came with this truck. I took some of them out just because I wanted to put other stuff in the back seat for now while I'm working on the truck. But uh, yeah, here she is. Um, I thought that was pretty amazing. There's no rust bubbles anywhere. No rust holes. Uh, here's my new tires. I 
put the uh, the Nitto Ridge Grapplers on it. Um, I think they set off the truck. That one's still got quite a bit of the sticker still on it. Uh, ladder bars. I'm going to take those off. I'm not, I'm not planning on ripping this truck and goosing it really hard all the time. Um, I plan on using it to haul stuff and uh, just kind of drive it. <laughs> so putting any kind of weight in a bed of a truck with ladder bars on it really makes it uncomfortable. Um, the purpose of ladder bars is to keep your axle in line and not give it any twist when you're heavy in the throttle. Um, I don't plan on doing that. Now this truck is chipped. It's got an EFI Live uh, five stage tuner on it. So it, 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 it'll get down the road. It's a pretty, pretty mean truck. Uh, smoked out tail lights. Pretty bad. It's not all beat up and rusted out. I do have a uh, gooseneck hitch in the bed under that bed liner. Um, but yeah, overall, it's a it's a really clean truck. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, not a fan of the uh there's a rock in the tread not a fan of the the front grill probably end up changing it but it'll do for now that's the worst part on the truck that dent right there but it's covered in bird poop oh, i hate that uh but yeah it's a pretty good looking truck overall i think i was pretty pleased with it when i found it um so yeah, I don't know if I'll leave that or not. <laughs> It'll probably get me in trouble. But it's got the, the sliding back glass on it. Um, left the friggin' headlights on on the car. Killed the battery like a dummy. Um, oh, I wanted to show you guys this, this sticker. I thought that was pretty cool. West Virginia Cummins crew. But yeah, yeah. All right, guys. That's going to be the end of this episode. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Uh, there will be quite a few more videos on this truck. Uh, there's some, some more things I want to do to it. Some things that have been done to it that haven't been completed. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll make some more videos of it, and we'll, we'll end up uh, probably doing some pretty crazy stuff with this truck. Uh, the sky's the limit. I really don't have a, a price tag that I want to put on this truck because I don't plan on selling it, so I'm not going to be worried about the cost of particular parts like I am on all of my other builds. And I'm not, I'm not really going to keep track of how much I have in it because I'm not worried about making a profit. I'm more so concerned with making this truck exactly what I want. So, uh, yeah. Gabriel, you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.